And this morning, I want to talk about um, one of the most famous Baptist preachers, uh, really, in, that America's ever known, uh, Dr. George W. Truett, who was the pastor of First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas. Um, his sermons are still treasured. You can, you can listen to them. Uh, he has a couple of famous sermons that you may not have realized were preached by him by the title. Um, once you hear his voice, you'll never really forget his voice. His, his voice was full of pathos, almost sorrow as he preached. And um, he was used of God to, to call countless to repentance and, and the faith in the Lord Jesus. Um, he was saved at the age of 19 um, at the Clay County Baptist Church in North Carolina. Um, he had fought the Holy Spirit's conviction for years, but that morning as the evangelist gave the invitation, he went forward with dozens of others that were streaming down the, down the aisle, and he told his mother the next morning, he said this, he said, he could not draw back, he could draw back no longer from such commitment and confession. I answered the claims of Christ without any reservation, and afterward my heart was filled with great peace. He uh, was baptized, and he joined the church um, uh, right soon thereafter. And God called him to preach um, soon thereafter. He attended Baylor University in 1890. He pastored in Waco, Texas for a while. Um, and then in 1897, at the age of 30, he was called to pastor the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas. So remember that. He's 30 years old, probably at, uh, at this time um, in his life. Um, but few people of our generation really know his, the whole story. They know George Truett as, uh, and I'm sure you've probably heard the name, as a great pastor. But um, many don't know the, the, the uh, story, the experience that transformed his ministry um, really into, into the great man of God that he became. Um, it was on the 4th of February, 1898. He had been pastor of First Baptist Church just for less than a year. He was still 30 years old. And he, along with the uh, Captain Arnold, who was the chief of the Dallas Police Department, and another pastor, uh, Pastor Baines, who was the pastor of another church in the, in the area in Clyburn, Texas. Um, they went uh, quail hunting. Um, they really enjoyed doing this. It was the passion of theirs. And um, the, 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 the story says the trio greatly enjoyed the fellowship together as they hunted east of Clyburn. But as they prepared to return uh, back to Pastor Baines' home uh, when they were finished, Dr. Truett, uh, he, he shifted his, his hammer and the shotgun from one arm to the other, and it accidentally discharged. And the blast um, uh, struck Captain Arnold in the right leg um, and really caused a terrible, a terrible wound. Um, thinking that the wound was not serious, Captain Arnold kind of just uh, tried to reassure the pastor, but almost as if um, Pastor Truett knew uh, how, how, how serious this was, um, he just had, an, like an, at that moment, he said, an unspeakable agony of heart. And um, the, he was, uh, Captain Arnold was taken to Dallas uh, for treatment, um, but uh, they could not contain uh, the bleeding and the problems with, uh, with uh, blood clots, and he passed away the next evening on February 5th into the presence of the Lord. Now, um, that Wednesday, they held the uh, funeral service. Pastor Baines preached the funeral service uh, there at uh, First Baptist Church of Dallas. Um, and uh, George Truett was just filled with agony, if you can imagine. Um, just, just, just tore his life apart. Uh, he told his wife he'd never be able to preach again. Um, he, he couldn't sleep. I don't know if he slept much at all that week, if at all, uh, until uh, Saturday night. But he paced the floor. Uh, when it was announced that the cause of death was the formation of a blood clot in the heart, um, he was totally crushed. Um, and um, any attempts from friends to console him just seemed futile. As, as Sunday approached, um, he could not sleep, as I said. He, he just constantly paced. Um, the, the verse that kept going through his head was the verse in Psalms when David was, con was confronted with a terrible time in his life um, where David said, my times are in thy hands. And um, he just uh, had gone into severe depression. Finally, on Saturday evening, he fell asleep. Um, really from exhaustion for not having slept the whole week. It was during that night that he tells us later that God was just working on his heart during almost while he was sleeping. When he awoke in the morning, um, he, he had had this thought from a passage of the scripture that he was reading that my times are in thine hands and this thought um, uh, from scripture that now he was God's man and that God would, um, he would be God's man from now on. 
And um, it really changed his life. Uh, you'll see here what happens. But he, he uh, really, with, um, it said, with a drawn face and sad eyes, he entered the pulpit to preach that morning. And uh, things were very different with Dr. Truett from that moment on. And, and the results cannot be disputed. Um, he would pastor First Baptist Church of Dallas for 47 years. And during that time, um, that church would grow um, to more than 20,000 members. It became the largest church in the world at that time. And um, um, the, uh, to go on, he pastored there for 47 years, I said, until his death in 1944. Um, the, his humble yet simple uh, spiritual preaching um, earned him the, the reputation as the greatest order of the day. They said he was the second, he was, uh, they referred to him as the second Spurgeon. And as I read about his life, uh, there was a couple of things, uh, some anecdotal, but some things that really cropped up that I thought were interesting. I just wanted to portray or, or read them to you. Um, I was reading it from a man who had actually, uh, this is a, a contemporary writing, a man was, was uh, actually knew him very well. He was a member of the church. He was an author. And uh, he said a couple of things about him. I just thought it would be very interesting to hear. He said that, um, he said, what of this man? This man is one of the most remarkable it has ever been my privilege to know for liberality of spirit, self-sacrifice, gentleness of heart, purity of character in life, sympathy, helpfulness, liberality, and love. This writer does not believe that George W. Truett has any superior, and he has few, if any, peers. Um, for, all, for he has a heart for all humanity. He is absolutely innocuous to the blandishments of flattery or wealth. It's no wonder, therefore, that in Dallas he is universally beloved, and not just in Dallas, but all over the South. Uh, where his name is, his name is uh, known through all Texas as a self-sacrifice. His, his self-sacrificing deeds are almost a household, household word. Uh, he said that he had given away many times down to his last penny, only to earn some more money and give it all away. Um, and I thought this, this anecdote was interesting, this, this conversation that the author had with uh, Dr. Truett at that moment. He said he was, he was talking to Dr. Truett, and when speaking to him, he told him of a gift that a mutual friend had given to a, a family that had lost a loved one and in order to help defray the funeral expenses. And the pastor, he said, who's with searching eyes, turned upon this man and he said, and this is interesting, I think, maybe tells you the character of this man. He said, this is what money is for and that is all it is for. And his life, who, you know, so he's the, the pastor of the largest church in the world and he wanted nothing to do with uh, any money of any kind. They had to force him to, to, the church had to force him to take a home. Uh, they built a home for him. Um, and it's just interesting, his, his self-sacrifice here and his comment about that is what money is for and that is all it's for. And um, anyway, his ministry proceeded during World War I. Just a couple little interesting notes. Uh, President Woodrow Wilson um, uh, chose him as one of a very few amount of preachers that he sent to the, uh, a six-month tour to preach to the Allied troops. Um, interesting note about his self-sacrifice, uh, Dr. Truett was concerned, um, something we probably wouldn't even think about, he was very concerned about the life of the cowboys who worked the cattle drives because they were so isolated from their churches, if they went to church at all, from their families, from society. And so he, every year, would take a month or two from his ministry and travel west, and he did this for 37 years, and he would travel, he would travel with the cattle drives and preach to those cowboys. Um, just an interesting man, and uh, how God used these kind of interesting things in his life. His, one of his most famous sayings is, to know the will of God is the greatest knowledge, to do the will of God, uh, the greatest achievement. And as I said, he pastored uh, the First Baptist, uh, First Baptist of Dallas until, uh, for 47 years until his death uh, in 1944. And, um, but I bring this story because I just wanted to give you the story of this great man of God, um, kind of have a, maybe a, a, a visual picture of him. If you, if you have the other pictures, you can put them up. Um, and uh, maybe maybe have okay, and um, the um, but but that incident in his life that changed his life, and uh, you know it said that uh, he had become the Lord's man through a bitter experience that allowed him to reach into the very hearts of his hearers, where they sat in the pew or sought his counsel in the hour of their sorrow. For none had experienced a greater sorrow than had this great man of God, and the Lord had sustained him. And so it's a great lesson for us, um, great story, and again, a, a great life lesson for us to realize in, in, in these uh, very difficult times that uh, God can sustain us and promises to do so.